Okay, I am now actually recording this session, so those of folks that can't stay can actually refer back to this at, at their own convenience, which is nice. Okay, so the whiteboard. Uh, this is the moderator uh, interface, as you can see. The whiteboard area is this area here that I'm clicking on. It's this white area where my PowerPoint presentation is. And it is, um, it is actually a great place to put PowerPoint presentations and um, content. If you look up here, this is the communication tab up here. And the whiteboard button is actually located up here on the upper left-hand corner of your screen. And as a participant, that whiteboard button is grayed out. For me, the moderator, it is not grayed out. I have access to it because I am the moderator. So that being said, um, this whiteboard adds a lot of interactivity into your course because it's kind of a blank slate let's say that you can add different types of information onto. To load content, you actually have to click on this button, but I'm going to come to that in just a minute. So let's talk about what kind of content can be loaded actually onto this whiteboard. So if you double click on, uh, if you click on that load button, what can actually be loaded onto the whiteboard? You can actually save uh, whiteboard uh, documents and open them up in there. The most popular is obviously the PowerPoint presentation. Open Office documents actually can be opened up in uh, Blackboard Collaborate. You can actually add images directly onto this whiteboard. Um, however, it's really important that if you're uploading PowerPoints that have animations or anything like that, those things are not going to be transmitted uh, onto the, the this whiteboard area. It will kind of wipe it clean and not um, and not allow you to utilize any sorts of animations. It's very, it's a very stagnant page. Um, that being said, any kind of video or multimedia that's added into your uh, into your PowerPoint presentation would not be able to be viewed right here in Blackboard Collaborate on the whiteboard. They would have to be uploaded separately into the media player, and that's a more advanced feature that I will do some more uh, training in later. So now that you know what type of information can be transmitted, OK, um, Basically, on the communication tab up here, all you would need to do is to click on uh, the load button. And you would choose the PowerPoint presentation or open office presentation that you wanted to upload to the whiteboard. And it basically extracts it from the PowerPoint presentation. That being said, if you get a red X, unable to load presentation, it's probably because PowerPoint is open. You have to make sure that PowerPoint is completely closed. And you go in, you find the folder, and then it will open up PowerPoint for you. But if you have PowerPoint open uh, before you click that load content button, you'll get this red X down here. So make sure the PowerPoint is closed. And once you go in and find it, it will open up PowerPoint for you. And it basically opens up the presentation. And you'll watch it as it extracts all the information directly from it, which is kind of interesting. Um, but I've had people who have said, well, I keep getting this red X. It's because you can't have PowerPoint on at all before you hit this load content button. So something to keep in mind. Once you upload a PowerPoint presentation or any presentation, you automatically get this page explorer, um, which actually shows you a nice thumbnail uh, of your entire presentation. To move from one slide to the next within Blackboard Collaborate, all I do is double click on which slide I want to go to next. And it puts it in nice chronological order for me. I have some options up here, too. 
it notice that this uh, up here it says follow and it's clicked. It means that you can um, you want your participants to be able to follow where you are clicking. If I clicked off it, then uh, you guys would have permission to click on any slide within this presentation, which is interesting. Um, but I usually click this follow button because I want you to follow along as I'm conducting a class. Okay. Um, excuse me. One minute. Sorry, I had to cough there. I have a cold, so uh, I didn't want to blow your ears off. So um, now I'm still on the whiteboard. Another feature of the whiteboard, which is really, really nice, is that you have these tools over in the left-hand side. Oh, I probably slowed down there for a minute. Sorry. Um, our connection slowed, but I should be back. Um, as a moderator, these tools automatically show up for me, which is nice. You, however, as participants, do not see this. However, at, in the participant window, I can actually give you access to see um, this on your end. And um, I can actually give you uh, access to that at any time. And I can teach you how to do that in a later session. Um, but it gives me the opportunity to click on some of these and, and change uh, my pointer. I can go in, which is this one here. I can go in and draw on the whiteboard. I can create uh, shapes. I can take a picture of what's going on in my desktop. And I have a clip art area that allows me to add clip art pictures directly onto the whiteboard, which is a great uh, tool. You can actually upload your own pictures into that as well. The um, okay, so that was the whiteboard. Does anyone have any questions about the whiteboard? Okay, Robert's typing in the uh, chat window. So he has a question, and I'll come to that in just a minute. Uh, can you use a tablet with the whiteboard? Yes, you can. A tablet basically um, works the same way as a mouse. So if you think about how I could, let me go back here quickly and create a blank page, which I can do up here on the top of my screen. I'm going to do a new page. I did a blank page here. Now if I go in and use my pencil tool, um, I can actually go in and write, which is really neat. So you could use this as a platform for whatever you'd like. Um, and it does work with a tablet very well. It would be the same as me right now using my mouse to um, create a smiley face. So it does work uh, with that. Um, so I hope that answers your question. So the whiteboard is, is a great tool. I can give you permission, actually. Would you guys like to, to play a little bit on this piece of, of blank paper? I can give you universal permission to come in and play with some of these tools real quickly. Give me a, a green check mark, a yes, if you'd like me to give you universal permission just to look around in here. OK, awesome. So right now, I'll go through the, what I'm doing to give you universal permission. Remember where those universal permissions are, OK? They're located right here next to where it says main room. And what I'm doing is I'm clicking on that little pencil because that is the um, that is a universal tool for the whiteboard. So if I click off that, everybody should then see those tools show up over here on the left hand side. Um, and with those tools, you can actually we can all work on this whiteboard together. So I'm going to give you. Why don't I give you like two minutes to go in and play with some of these tools and and you can create a masterpiece here. <laughs> I like the eyebrows. That's good. 
Great, it looks like everyone's picking these tools up relatively quickly. I like that. But you can see how this can be a collaborative board um, of information. You could, um, I've seen uh, teachers utilize this in webinar sessions where it would be an introduction and you could get a map of the world and everybody use the pencil tool and map uh, where they live around the world or where they've been around the world just to get everybody to know each other. So there's a lot of re really neat ways that you could use this, uh, this universal tool with your students. It can be very creative. Okay, so um, How's everybody feeling now? Did you get to spend enough time in this little sandbox page to uh, utilize these tools? Oh good, I got a smiley face. Excellent. You can see how that works. These universal tools are great when uh, you want to give your whole class permission for something. Um, and I can just as easily take away those permissions as I did give them, as I showed you before. So now I'm going to take these uh, tools away because we're going to move on. How's everybody feeling about moving on? Good? Okay. Good. Excellent. So um, we are going to move on. You guys are very creative there. I like your, I like your pictures. All right. So we're going to talk about the application sharing feature. And up on the communication tab up here, um, the, you have these three options. This one is your whiteboard, obviously, that we just went over. The next is the application sharing feature. Um, and this is your web tour. The application sharing is a really great feature because what it allows you to do is it actually allows you to click on this button as a moderator and have it bring you directly to the desktop of your computer. So when would you use application sharing features? You would use this if you were showing students how to, or directing students how to log into Angel, for instance, or if you were trying to work out a, um, do a tutorial for students in a software program that um, is difficult. Um, and I'm going to show you um, an example in just a minute and bring you into the Academic Support Services um, professional development page just briefly, just to show you what it looks like to you. So um, basically, when I click on this uh, application sharing button, what's going to show up to me, and you're not going to see this, so I just want you to see from my end what, what I'll be looking at. Um, when I click that, it's going to ask me, what do I want to share from my desktop? Where do I want to go? I have all of these items open on my computer, including the desktop. Which one do I want to go to explicitly? I generally 
go to the desktop and then I move my way in or you could choose uh, where you want it to go. So I'm going to share my desktop with you and bring you into Firefox and show you the um, show you what it looks like to application share and, and show you a tutorial. So I'm going to quickly click on this button and you'll see how uh, it gives you this uh, rotating button and I'm going to go in and I'm going, from what I showed you before, I'm going to select uh, Firefox or you could do desktop, whichever one. I'm going to share it. Great. And now you should be seeing my Firefox on your screen. I am no longer actually uh, looking at the interface of Blackboard Collaborate. I see this yellow ring actually located all the way around my screen with these three uh, options in the upper right hand corner. So that's what I'm looking at. And basically I can go in and show you and direct you and you're looking at exactly what I'm doing in real time. And there is a little bit of a lag, but not too much of one, actually. And um, it works actually quite well. And I recommend, and I'm going too quickly, actually. You just scroll um, not as quickly as you maybe generally would. But you can actually go in and show folks what's going on in your computer without actually having to create a PowerPoint presentation. So it's an option. And um, if you scroll down, you can work your way around. So I'm actually in Firefox. I can actually pause this up here by clicking this pause button. And then I can go in and do, you can't see what I'm doing right now. It's keeping me stagnant on a page. And then if I unpause it, it'll bring you directly where I am and show you directly what I'm seeing. Okay? Now, um, after this session, you can actually go in to the course cubbies and you'll see a cubby open that's called Blackboard Clarity. There's a lot of neat tools that will be in there and I'll keep adding to it. I can take a picture as well of my desktop at this point if I wanted to, um, or I can just close it up and it brings me back into Blackboard Collaborate. As you can see, it tells me that it's stopped and it's no longer using and it'll keep doing this until I go back up to my Communicate tab and click on the whiteboard button. And then it'll bring me directly back to the whiteboard uh, presentation. So. Um, it's a nice way to toggle back and forth through what's on your computer and what's in your presentation. Um, oh, we looked at what each one of these meant. And we can go further into depth later on. The next item that I'm going to show you is the web tour. And I'm going to go relatively quickly because I'm going to give myself another 10 minutes. Um, the web tour um, is a useful tool for things like showing uh, YouTube presentations or YouTube videos because um, a lot of us utilize YouTube videos and um, instead of downloading it, you can show it through the web tour. And I'm going to show you one in just a moment and you can see what it looks like very briefly. Um, but the web tour is this button right up here. So I'm going to take you into a web tour really quickly. And then um, I'm going to show you a like two minutes of a video. And you can see what it looks like from your end. Give me just a second. I'm going to click on this button. And I'm going to go into my video. And I'm going to grab the URL for my YouTube video. And I'm going to place it in here. And I'm going to press Enter. 
and you should be watching my video at this point. It automatically starts the video for you. And you can see that it works relatively well in here. So if you wanted to show a YouTube video, this would be a great way to do it, um, or any online video. Okay. So I'm going to stop this quickly uh, because I don't want to go through the whole thing. We don't have time. But I wanted to show you what this would be useful for, um, just so that you can um, see how it actually transmits and works. So I'm going to pause this, and I'm actually going to bring you right back to the desktop. So you can see that YouTube videos work relatively well. I wish I could show you the whole video. It's actually quite a good video. <laughs> but uh, it's not going to happen today. As you can tell, I can, I can talk forever. <laughs> um, so the web tour, when I added that URL in, I copied and pasted the URL in here. So of course, it has to be a forethought of what you want to show ahead of time. And you have to have those links available to copy and paste directly in here. So you copy it in and paste it in here. And you would make sure that the, the uh, this button is clicked so that you are following me, which is important. And here, I can actually click on this and send out the URL directly into the chat box. So if anybody wanted it later, they could have it. And I have a question for Marianne. The volume of the video is loud, and I couldn't hear you while it was playing. Is there a way for the persistence to control both volumes individually? Actually, what would have been uh, better for me to do would have been to stop when I uh, put the video in and pressed Enter and turned off my talk button. And that was my fault. Um, generally, I would actually turn off that talk button, and then it would allow you to watch the video. And then uh, when the video was done, I would click back on that talk button and continue talking. So. That was that was my fault. I apologize. <laughs> That's probably why you're having some volume problems. So that's a really good question, though. Um, and lesson learned. <laughs> uh, OK, the video did not appear on my screen, and it was a Mac. Um, hmm. That's interesting. Uh, that's something we might want to work out. I, I don't know why it wouldn't be working on your computer, because it should. Um, and I consider all of these like teachable moments. If it doesn't, again, um, a nice tool to throw out to students, too, is if they chat and say, I can't see it or whatever, this button here, it will automatically take that link and throw it directly into the chat box for a direct link to that, that video. So that's another option that you have um, to fall back on if something like that happens. Does that make sense? OK. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There must be a plugin or something that, um, oh, I know what it is on a Mac. I just thought about it. Uh, it's They do not run Flash. Um, and YouTube is run off Flash video. Um, and that might be one of the problems. I don't know if that's 100% the problem, but that might be one of the issues um, because of the Flash. So that could be it. Um, you can see YouTube normally. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe something that's we're going to have to maybe bring your computer in at some point and, and see if we can't get that to work. We can test it again later if you ever want to do a um, test uh, a test you know session. That would be fine. We can work on that. I don't know why that wouldn't show up. I've never had that happen before. Uh, so let me move down. We have questions and answers at this point. And please, don't hesitate to ask anything. And I know that I ran quite a bit over, so I apologize. Uh, but it is being recorded. So if you ever need to go back and, and view that, 
let me know and, and you can take a look at it. And I just wanted to add too that um, under the Academic Support Services Professional Development Group, if you click on the content tab, there's a workshop evaluation form in there. Um, feedback is always welcomed um, because I want to make these uh, workshops as valuable to you in your time as possible. And don't forget that we do have more workshops coming up in February and March. We have um, we have a lot of great ones coming too from from Southwest Library Commons, and I'm going to do some on Google Drive and tips for successful successful virtual classrooms. So I'll give you some of those tips that I use to um, smoothly create a online workshop or session. Are there any other questions that I can answer for people that um, that um, I haven't answered yet, or any confusion? Okay, we've got some, we have some questions coming up in the chat windows, and I'll take them as they come in. Okay, here's a question. Can you look at the screen on a student's computer? Um, that's one of my tricks that I do. Um, I generally bring my uh, other computer in. And I send out an invitee link to myself. And you'll notice that one of my participants over here is Jane Smith. <laughs> Jane Smith is actually me as a student. <laughs> so I like to send out that invitee link. I log on as Jane Smith or John Dull. So that gives me a reflection of what you're looking at on your screen and make sure that everything is working properly and you're seeing and hearing what I hear. So that's one of my little tricks that I'm going to tell people in the tips and tricks, but you're getting it nice and early. But um, there's no way to toggle back and forth to see what students see um, within Blackboard Collaborate as a moderator. Um, the only other way to do that is to send the external link and log on as a student. So this is actually me right here. I'm, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I gave myself a smiley face as a student. That's just kind of my way to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it works really nicely because I want to make sure that it's all working. And and I really appreciate you being here today. And I hope you join us again for another one of our sessions. And please fill out the evaluation because I would love to get feedback from you. And I appreciate you being here today. And thank you. And it was so nice having you all here. Please don't hesitate to call with any questions or, or working anything out. Um, I'd be happy to answer them for you. And have a great day. I'll be on for a little while if you have any more questions. <laughs>